Um, we have a special guest that I am so excited to have. Oh, uh, thank Ruth, you. Ruth Ann Werner, a wonderful ceramic artist, uh, my former art teacher, and actually was probably the one that started me on the road of art and wanting to stay on particularly visual art. And when I got back to painting, you were one of the ones that I, you know, inspired me to get back to that, believe it or not, even though we, yeah, I know. Wow. <laughs> so, but, but we're here to talk about you and, and sort of not just, we're here to talk about you as a ceramic artist and all that you've done for the community. So let's talk about, let's just start right into clay and ceramic and, and why, why well, Jan, I'm so glad to hear that because, you know, when I think of my career as a teacher, um, I, 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 there's nothing pleases me more than hearing from students who have pursued it um, and where, you know, I did make a difference or, you know, where there was some little spark that, that led them into something that, I mean, let's face it, making art is about the happiest thing you can do. Yeah. So, well, which is a good point in the context. So let's talk about teaching before we even get to what you're doing. So why teaching? Why, why, what is it about that really kind of inspires you? So Because I like to learn. There is nothing better than learning. I, can, I mean, I won't have enough, I should have two or three lives because I want to learn everything and because there, there when you learn something new, there's feelings that you have that just can't be duplicated. And I want to share that. Yeah. You know, I know that you've got something, maybe you don't know it right now, but when you try it, I mean, I know you're going to feel really good. So you were an art teacher at Banting, which yes. is where I knew you, yes. uh, art teacher at Montcalm, yes. secondary school, two high schools, and did you retire from Montcalm? Was there, yes. was there another school in there? I, I started at Weeble. Weeble, okay. Two years at Weeble, then Banting, then Montcalm. Great, okay. Um, and so one of the things about art, you people either go one of two ways. They go, oh, that's so easy, I could do that. They see a piece of abstract art and they think that they can do it, or they think, oh man, I can't draw, I can't do that, and so don't actually even get involved. What would you say to someone like that as a teacher? Well, everybody has creativity. Yeah. Everybody can make art. And I, I think that, you know, there, there's a real myth about um, what artists do, that you know, maybe you're born with it, that's not true. Yeah. And if somehow you can encourage in a, a student to, to to just take a taste, and you know, once they've got that little hook, then what they want to try more. Yeah. And if I can help that happen, I sometimes I remember these students. Uh, a student one time said to me, oh, "You." You tell everybody. You tell everybody their stuff is wonderful. It is. Yep. It is. And it's wonderful because it's of them, right? It's it's authentic. It's at the piece, whatever the level is at. Um, so if you are a te your teacher and you lead lots of classes, and we're going to talk about those classes a little bit later. But what are some of what are kind of the main couple of things that you would want everybody to get out of the classes, or what are some of the main lessons you would want to? people to leave with? Um, that, that art okay, is something, it's for everybody. Okay. It's not just for a select group. Um, everybody can gain from 
knowing about it or doing it, mm -hmm. either or. And um, they, they shouldn't be afraid to try it. Yeah, they shouldn't, right? Okay. Um, um, okay, so we'll do the teaching. So I actually also wanted to get into you as an artist um, in terms of your process and talk a little bit about particularly you're a wonderful ceramic artist. You gave ah. me this a few years ago, um, but can you tell me why cer ceramics as the, the, your art of choice, your visual art of choice? Or do you still love, do you love doing everything? I, I I think I'd like to try everything out there, um, but oh, so working three dimensionally has always appealed to me. And uh, once you work with clay, it's pretty hard not to get hooked in one way or the other. I'm not a potter. That has a whole different connotation. I like the one of a kind, unique things that you can do with clay, and. I mean, you can you can break all kinds of rules when you work with clay. So, so that's interesting. I'm not a potter clay artist. I mean, I'm a two dimensional painter visual. But so the, the difference between potter and ceramics is that so. Well, the term ceramic is sometimes misunderstood. Ceramic means that it's fired yeah. and it's permanent. Okay. Um, pottery, very often the term implies functional things okay um, or but and I make some functional things for fun but for the most part I don't care if they're functional and I don't make things that I feel will market I make things things that I want to make. Uh, okay, so when I think of someone who works in pottery, they might throw the clay onto a pot, they may build a pot, they may do all of those things, or um, whether it's plates or pots, or even, so pottery folks can also make things that are ornamental, but clay artists tend to do things, or sorry, ceramic artists tend to do more things like this, where you're... Um, creating objects of beauty. When you work with a wheel, and there's some things better made on a wheel. Yeah. Like if, let's say for example, a mug. Um, there are certain things about a mug that have to fit your mouth, or have to be comfortable. Sometimes things like that are better made with centrifugal force and made on a wheel. Right. They're, they're, um, I don't have the personality uh, where I would want to do something over and over and over. Yeah. Um, but there is an advantage of doing things over and over, but, but n not the way I'm describing it here. Um, the, I know uh, the, my former, my, my teacher in Arizona, uh, the one I was telling you about before, um, she, she has a, 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 a motto and you never make anything once. Okay, but that's we're talking about hand building. Primarily, ninety nine percent of my work is hand built. Okay. There's no wheel involved, and which means that I can work any size, any shape, any texture. Um, I'm not limited by centrifugal force. So, like I said before, I can break all the rules. But her motto is. Never do anything once. So, for example, when I was working on these, I think I made about 10. They're all different. Yeah. Until I got the feel of something, and then I moved on to something else. Yeah. I. So, as you know, I paint, and yes. I, I have an art mentor, um, and he always says to me, do it again, do it again. And sometimes I hate that, because once I think I've learned a technique, I want to move on to something else. Yes. But he's, no, it's, it's actually, the more you do it, the better you get at it in terms of, and, and you understand what's kind of going on. So there, there's so much, now you back to clay while you do it. Uh, when you hand build, you get to know clay on a very intimate level. 
you know what it's going to do. Like you really understand that material. You become one. You know, I know people laugh at that, but you, you know, but it only t and it takes a few times with when you're learning a technique or you're or you've got an idea until that gels. But you know, I, what's really interesting about this is you really want. You're making me feel like I really want to get my hands in the Good. clay. <laughs> it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a mud pot almost. You get your hands in and figure it out. Now, when you start a piece, then do you know where it's going to go? Do you know what you're going to do, or do you just start kind of playing and something emerges? Okay, I plan a lot, and I know that a lot of my students, even the adult students now. Uh, that, you know that that's hard at the beginning, and they're, and they're a bit resistant. Like plan, plan, plan. But once you get started, play, play, play. Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay. But ha have a vision, have have some kind of a plan to get off the ground, and then it'll help you. It'll it'll develop as you go. Yeah. So if what's kind of interesting about this conversation is in many ways we're actually talking about philosophy of life, right? Do it again. Um, you know, never do something once, learn, but plan, but then make sure you leave time for the play and the creativity because the planning actually sets the stages for the ability to play, right? If you don't if you don't plan and you don't quite know what you're doing, then it becomes a bit of a stress, um, but yeah, this is this is kind of interesting. Um, we're going to go around a little bit, if that's okay. Um, and maybe what we'll do is we'll visit your studio. I, we're we're here at Ruth Ann's home. <laughs> um, we're actually can we visit some of your pieces as well? And, oh, and, you sure yeah, can. actually that'd be amazing. Um, we'll walk around and then we'll come back and we'll have a have a seat and finish up chatting. Does that sound okay? Sure. Okay. You know, during the pandemic, I had time to play. Uh, well, you know what? We're not going to go around yet. Then let's talk about the pandemic. Um, so you had time to you had time to play because a lot of your time is spent teaching others, correct? And so um, you learn a lot that way, but you don't necessarily have time to explore yourself. So is, is that what happened during the pandemic? Right. When you're teaching, I mean, you're using your your creative being yeah. with every person you're teaching. Yeah. During the pandemic, I couldn't. Yeah. And I don't think I realized it right off the bat, but suddenly I had all this time to just play on my own. Yeah. It was fantastic. And you've been doing this for how many years? <laughs> But, well, you know, it's it's a sign. I mean, it's a sign that we can do this. Wow, it's we can do it at any age, right? Right. And and we can get involved and then stay involved in it at any age. I know some things get more difficult for all of us as we get older, but age doesn't matter when you're passionate about something. Though. Well, you know something, Jane. Somebody, a friend, who recently told me that you know they're too old for this. And I think you're too old to have fun and feel good. Yeah. I mean, that's what this stuff does. Yeah. I look, I feel inside like I'm 15 sometimes yes. until I look in the mirror <laughs> yes. and go, whoa. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But the, so, you know, so if someone wanted to start playing, let's say, because you find real joy in playing, but let's say someone wanted to start playing in ceramics, what would you say, how would you suggest that they do that? Okay. I, first of all, you, you've got to take the chance and take a beginner class. Mm -hmm. Just and take a beginner class that allows you to be creative. Yeah. Now, when I teach, I, I I try to make a point of teaching techniques so people can develop skills, as opposed to uh, we're going to make snowman. Yeah. Okay. Um, once someone has some confidence with a technique and realize, oh, I could do anything. I could do something that I want to do, my idea, yeah. they're hooked. Yeah, but they also, they do want to learn technique, but they oftentimes do want to come up with something at the end. But you, you got to get there. you got to get there. you got to get there. Uh, you got to have that confidence that this thing is actually going to work. Yeah. And then... But I, I always try very hard that the actual 
stamp on that piece of work says them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we are going to go around in a minute, but before we do that, um, when I arrived, you talked about something. We we're talking about the challenges we face as artists. Um, that we oftentimes have a lot of unfinished work. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and what is so... Well, when, when you start, like I said, I plan. Yeah. And you have a vision. And one of the things that working with Clay, and it, th this, this has really prompted me and led me in a couple directions. Uh, one of the things that working with Clay is that it's not, it's really not that difficult to be able to construct almost anything you want to three-dimensional. I don't know if you can see that purse up there. We're gonna, oh yes, yeah. Okay, but you know, you can almost build anything. Yeah. But the whole thing, the finished product, still has to be fired, still has to be glazed. And it's that very last step that's gonna make it or break it. Huh. That finishing step. And that's the step that you don't have all the control over. And sometimes that's freeing and sometimes that's pretty scary, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And when I get to that step and I know like, okay, the decision on the glaze or the way I'm gonna fire it, that could totally lose this whole thing. Then I kind of say, well, I'll finish it later yeah. when I when I really know. Well, sometimes I don't. Yeah. I find I don't finish things because I don't know where to go. I, I, I've, or I've overworked it and I just don't know either how to make it better. I've lost the vision of where I'm, where I'm going. Um, I also, I tend to start something and then because I'm so excited about starting in a process like the blocking in process, it's kind of like the yeah. building. I want to keep building. I don't want to finish. I don't want to move on to the next stage. I want to build the next thing as opposed to finishing it. Do you find that as well? You kind of do a bunch of pieces at the same time? I do. Um, because when, once you get one idea, that idea immediately is telling you about another idea. Yeah. And you just, it's so easy to go. Oh, it branch, is. I'm branching off. Oh, right. Yeah. Which is a great sign of creativity, isn't it? Well, it, I, you're never going to have, if, if that's the way you operate, uh, there's never like an end. What am I going to do next? Yeah. Because it's always like, all right, that, that one, now i got to go to that. I've got to go to that. Finish that one. The one problem, obviously, for that is we don't always finish things. However, we're about to go through and see all the ones that you have finished. Oh. <laughs> because, because that's, you know, an artist, um, how should they say, a master or somebody who's good at their craft continues to do it again and again and again. And if it doesn't quite work, they put it aside and they keep going. Um, but they will finish things. So even though we might complain or get discouraged <laughs> about all the things that we haven't finished yes. or the process, we're about to see all the ones that you have. And they're just, they're pretty, pretty amazing. So, and are you okay? Can we, can we go see your studio as well? Sure. Awesome. Okay. So good. let's go. Okay. So here is the studio. Oh. So the slab roller for slabs. Yes. And um, the kiln. That this is a luxury. Um, and I got, I bought, I felt justified when we were doing the poppies for for Godric. So. So here is the studio. Oh, oh. oh my goodness! No, don't worry. Yeah. If, so no, don't show the mess, please. <laughs> I'm not showing the mess. I'll no, cut not it out. That stuff. Okay, not okay, that. okay. Over here. The kiln, okay. Yeah, yeah, over here. Okay. Yeah. So all the slabs for every poppy, they were rolled here. Wow. Like 1,300 slabs, and then we took them all up to uh, a studio where we uh, we built them. So you have three. So you slab roller and three kilns. Yes. Um, this is manual. This is a, a kiln. Yeah. So I'm going to show you. Sure. So now we're going outside because this is. Are there pieces here? Or this is also where you do well, your work. Pieces everywhere. Yeah. 
but I'll, sh I'll show you. But th this is where I often work because I've yeah. got lots of fresh air. Yeah. But this is where I do a lot of my glaze. Oh, okay. Uh, because um, I spray a lot of my work. Yeah. Now, if you were... I want to pay most of the attention to the shape and the texture of the piece. Here we are, uh, Ruthann, and we are, let's, I'm going to follow you, um, and let's, let's actually go into your main living room area okay. and see some of the pieces um, that are just, now I use the word amazing a lot. Um, I need to start to try to find some other words that are a little more descriptive, but I look at this that's on the wall, I look at the sculptures on the ground, I look at the bowls, and I just think, amazing. Um, I, I don't know, where do we want to start? Um, let's start with this piece. So, well, um, I I think you could probably figure out that I that I did that piece um, after we did the poppy installation in um, Goderich. Oh wow! Remember they do, yeah, the poppy, yeah. Um, and I I was really really moved by why we were doing the poppy installation, what it was all about, the history, but it was also an, an incredibly enlightening experience working with that many people yeah. and uh, getting to know that many people in our community that is that's beautiful in fact i might come back later and take it off your wall <laughs> it's called it's I, oh i think it would be too hard to get off it's anchored into into oh, wow. uh, the wall but it's called remembering oh wow okay remember um do you have a favorite piece here a favorite? Or is it kind of like favorite, asking a mother well, about their favorite kid? Um, <laughs> it, it, like it depends what day you ask me. Okay. And what, I guess if it boiled down to favorite, it might mean how I feel when I'm doing it. Yeah. And there's a technique that I've been used to do a lot of, and that's called scraffito. Scraffito. Okay. This is this is scraffito, and um, it's a, it's a, a technique. It's a process that is extremely relaxing, and um, what I what I find is. I don't know if you know the process, but it's uh, it, this whole piece would have been covered in black slip. Sorry, black s slip, slip, which is liquid clay. Okay. And then, at a certain stage, with a variety of tools, you uncover or carve away the color of the clay behind it. Oh, wow. Okay. And um, I love pattern. I like positive, negative, and just one idea, like we talked about before, it leads to another, and I just get mesmerized in doing it. Oh, okay. That is amazing. But well, what I do the most of, what I have done the most yeah. of, is Raku. Okay, so what is Raku? Raku is a, a firing technique. Now, with hand building, or with any, with any clay work, um, there are endless possibilities on how you build it, how you glaze it, but also on how you fire it. And I'm interested in different firing techniques, and I got very interested in Raku a num quite a number of years ago. And um, it involves uh, firing the piece outside in a gas kiln or uh, it, so, it, because you actually shock the clay badly, um, which normally you don't do. Like with other pieces of pottery, everything is subtle. You raise the temperature slowly, you lower the temperature slowly so you don't shock it. With Raku, after it's been bisque fired, um, and I, I'll take you to my Raku kiln and show you, um, it's put in an outdoor kiln long enough to melt the glaze, and when it's in that molten stage, you actually reach in with tongs, take it out, like under great shock, you take it out and you put it into some kind of a container. And that's all, it's done in a lot of different ways. A friend of mine does his in 
ground pits. I do mine in garbage cans lined with newspaper. And when you put it into that container um, and at a certain point, uh, I mean, you ignite the paper, you, you get the flames licking the piece. You, each one is done separately. Yeah. E ignite, uh, licking the piece, and the lid goes on. Oxygen disappears as it's burned off. Yeah. When the oxygen is gone, there are minerals pulled from the clay. There's a uh, a surprise thing happens. It they're all different. So they're not means a surprise. Oh, surprise! Oh wow! So you don't know what it's going to be when it comes out. No, you don't. That's well, kind of cool. they're. I mean, you can after a while. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yes. So you don't glaze it. You yes, you do. You, so you, you glaze it and then, glazes. Yeah. Okay. There are different glazes, and uh, some are more predictable than others. And but the the thing that is most surprising about it, it it's very dependent on the weather and where you are. I get different results in Arizona than I do here. Because of the humidity? Yes. Wow, okay. And on a day like today, if it, it's not lightning, if I were out there, if we were out there firing right now, we would like to get tremendous results. On a day like today, I've had the best results I've ever had. So we should be actually out doing some. Be firing. So we should be firing. That's right. So next time it rains, I'll come and we'll okay. do some firing. That's amazing. Sounds like a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Okay. So so these two pieces are rec. They're rec, rec and like each oh. piece is done separately. Plus the leaves. And so what do you call these pieces? Um, no, th this one's called blessed, and that one is a line from uh, okay, Canada. Canada because. It, uh, in our recent political climate, climate <laughs> yes, that's a good word, I have become very more and more proud to be Canadian. And um, the symbol, the maple leaf, has taken on a new meaning for me um, because sometimes it's being misunderstood. Hmm. And is that in part because of uh, spending time in the States? Yeah, a lot yeah, of it. A lot of it is a that. A lot of it. Yeah. The misconceptions. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really interested in different techniques. So I want to try everything in my lifetime once. That one in the middle is called Ovara. The effects on that piece of pot are from immersing it into fermenting solution of flour and sugar and yeast. Sounds like it should be an alcohol you drink afterwards. It smelled like, it smelled like beer. <laughs> yeah, it wow. did. But that's what it's from. Wow. And of course, this is horse hair. So which one's horse hair? That's not mine, but it's horse hair. Okay. Um, when, wow. you, when if you lay a coarse horse hair on to uh, a bis or a, a hot piece, it's going to burn the pattern on. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is the purse that you were yes. referring to after before, earlier. Do you want me to bring it out? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. Um, like I said, you can you can build anything yeah. if you plan it out and you think it out and know what the clay will do. Um, and I just like the challenges of of trying something different. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Was that four or five? He's lost count and still thinks he can drive. Do you think he knows that when he is caught and charged with impaired driving, he'll lose his license and a lot more? If he gets in his car, he'll face costs exceeding $20,000. 
Does he realize he could have a criminal record for his choice to drive? And it could be much worse if he crashes. 